power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Women need security, they need emotional fulfillment. That means what men should do is not just to look for wives. They should understand that if I commit myself to marriage, I'm committing myself to providing security, providing emotional fulfillment. It is true that when men provide security and emotional fulfillment, they provide for the women the fuel that drives them to be supportive that drives them to give their best and their all towards the central purpose of that home. Gentlemen, listen to me. We must make up our minds that in the name of Jesus, all of the responsibility that we need to submit ourselves to, that make for providing security and providing the requisite level of emotional fulfillment that you will labor under God to make that happen. This is where things like irresponsibility and the rest becomes bad. Are we together now? Yes. The motive that drives many people from marriage is very disturbing because marriage is a lifetime thing. And anything that is not lasting will become a disadvantage eventually. I hope you are getting blessed with what I'm sharing. This is a very powerful Valentine message. So that as you are preparing you don't just look and say ah i'm not young again no. my department who is there or my this or who is there who can i check and i'm ready for marriage just because the church approves your wedding date doesn't mean you are ready for marriage these are the things that must be in place with all humility you can know i'm ready for marriage i'm ready for marriage because i'm ready to commit to providing security and providing the emotional fulfillment i'm ready for marriage because i am ready to honor my husband sincerely i am ready to respect i am ready to honor him truly now let me say this the real way to be a blessing is to work on yourself the real way to be a blessing is not expecting what will make you a blessing. It's working on yourself. I think that most times we have it the other way around. Most ladies believe that when you get that exceptional man, when you get that wonderful man, then you will be happy. Most men believe that when you get that exceptional lady, then you will be happy. Let me tell you this. It is true that the value that is built from within you becomes your advantage. I told you that love in marriage is unconditional, but stability and fulfillment is highly conditional. It will be impossible, look up please, it will be impossible for a couple that eventually are not active contributors of value to themselves to indefinitely continue to remain in joy and be happy to see themselves every day. It's not true. They will make up their mind that under every condition this marriage will stand but as far as joy and fulfillment is concerned it does not just work by default listen please look up no woman should love her husband just because he brings bread to the table just because he's visionary just because he's making progress however when that man becomes visionary when that man becomes responsible it's easy for her knees to touch the ground because there is a basis are we together now there is a support system that encourages her honor you cannot compare two women on one side you have this man 
who is not responsible he still doesn't care whether the rent is paid he doesn't care whether the children are fed all he knows is that whatever will be will be and then a man who is meticulously responsible the approach of their wives to them will not be the same the woman will say i will love my husband forever but you cannot say they are fulfilled at the same level are we together fulfillment and stability is based on mutual contribution of value please write it down this is very powerful that mindset of unconditional love just for nothing is going to cost many people a lot because there are many ladies who are not doing anything about their lives they are not growing they are not building themselves they are not building their minds all they are doing is praying and expecting a visionary born again established man to come same thing happening for the men they are not building themselves they are not building capacity all they are doing is praying for that wonderful lady to come it does not work that way what I'm saying is true you may love me as a person but you will get fulfilled around me only based on the awareness of the value that I continue to provide for you is that true yes sir when it was time for Isaac to bless his sons he said make me venison it, I know you are my son but I need value to come from you to gladden my heart so that something can leave me to you are we together now look up please as the bride of Christ we are all his bride he will never deny you but in terms of usability we are not the same are we together now do you agree with that that God can almost seem to abandon one person and come and stand and invest his attention on another why because of your committal to advancing his purposes the sacrifices you have made to build yourself spiritually that every time you show up in a place you allow so much of God to find expression and God has noted you for being so useful for the kingdom and so he will guard you he will protect you this is how it is no man will indefinitely be proud of his wife forever for nothing no woman will indefinitely be proud of her husband for nothing these are hard truths that many will not tell you but listen your love will remain regardless of what happens but your fulfillment and the stability of your home will be predicated upon the mutual awareness of the value that you provide this is true all staff are staff in a company but there is promotion even within that company and for every promotion there are many benefits that come with it someone can start from level one and in 10 15 years be at the same level this happens psychologically a man can promote his wife in his mind psychologically she's still his wife he still loves her but the depth of honor and committal continues to change every time she's an unfolding of wonder she continues to be an epitome of value and one day the man will stand and say lord thank you for giving me such a woman that's how you know you are valuable so away with that idea that my husband will marry me and no matter what happens the bible says he should love me you are right but you will still feel the heat of being valueless same thing happens to the man you cannot say well i've married and i've married i've paid a dowry and that's all you will be surprised at how draggy and grudgy and sad your marriage will be there will still be love but there will not be fulfillment fulfillment in marriage is highly conditional i love all the workers in this ministry you are precious people and you know that I love you with all my heart but in all fairness the level and the extent of contribution at an individual level is not the same are we together now that means that the trust level the and, and many other factors will not be the same God loves everybody the same but he does not trust everybody the same value is first virtue then skill listen 
every time we talk of value don't just think skill ladies don't just think of the ability to cook food alone and the ability to do all no 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 your skill comes later the real value of a person is your virtue what is your virtue your closeness to the character of christ we must continue to fight and contend for growth non-stop every day i want to become a better version of me listen a lady here must challenge herself married or not you must tell yourself i will be so exceptional and so virtuous that my husband will look at me and say thank god for this gift of god given to me same thing with the men that your wife will look at you tomorrow and say thank god for giving me this gift virtue no matter how gifted you are if you do not have virtue and character you will not go far are you hearing what I'm saying now? This is very important. Virtue is a measure of your closeness to Christ. I always give this analogy that if virtue and skill run a sprint, skill will win. But if virtue and skill run a marathon, virtue will win. A day will come when your skill will fail you, but it is your virtue that will keep you. You will get to places in your life where everybody you meet is equally skillful. Your edge will be your virtue. You will get to a point where everybody is brilliant. Every man of God is anointed. Every woman of God is skilled. Your real virtue. See, I have seen the power of virtue. The lifting power of virtue. There are businessmen today who have won contracts worth hundreds of millions of naira and dollar, not necessarily because of their skill, but something about the, the life of their wife, their children, or their husband. You make that company say, no, you are the kind of people we want to work with. You are cautious. You are very respectful. Ladies, go back and pray. My dear brothers, go back and pray. Thank God for skill, but keep skill and cry and say, Lord, make me exceptional. Being exceptional is like a magnet. It's true. There are many skillful people that are not virtuous. You get to a point where in your managerial rise, company-wise, in terms of your career, you will get to a point where it's not just by your skill and technical and intellectual qualification that you rise again. You get to a point where your edge and your advantage becomes the love, the manner. There are people today, you know, I met a man, great man, wealthy man, and I saw a wonderful person that was a chef to him. And, and I asked, and I, you know, I asked that question. I said, um, how did you get this person? And he looked at me and laughed and said, this is one of the nicest elderly woman. This is one of the nicest women in the world. And it's true. When the woman came in within minutes, I had fallen in love with this wonderful woman. Elderly woman and her, the, the level of, of character and manner and cautiousness in speaking the body language of respect and honor is, is almost flattering. I said, my God, where did this woman learn this? That is virtue. There are women visitors come to your house and they vow never to come again. Why? Not because you don't have skill, but you lack character. There are men people do business once with you and vow that they will never because you are, you are, there is no temperance, there is no patience. There is no joy. There is no self-control. All of these virtues, they are powerful. The world is looking for the fruit of the Spirit in men. Even when they know they don't have it. Is God blessing us tonight? Yes, sir. Make sure that you make up your mind that I will be virtuous. I will be virtuous. Virtue is not for women. So men, when we are talking of virtue, don't think and say, I hope this lady is hearing. No, be exceptional. Look at me. Conquer the limitation of tribe. Conquer the limitation of your territory. Ladies, make up your mind and vow before God that I will be an exceptional woman. That because of me, people will love and honor my husband. Husbands, make up your mind. 
that I will be a man of solid character that because of me they will do you know lack of character is what is programming disaster for many children many of us today our parents were exceptionally skillful but they were not virtuous and there are doors that would have cheaply opened today that are closed when you are thinking family life don't think yourself think about your children think about their 10 years think about their 20 years I do not want a situation where my children will not have an opportunity to enjoy a great life because of me and people will say oh you are apostles child no whether spiritually or physically is the reason why we continue to strive by God's grace to create that ladder so that anybody who follows through that ladder already has a road created praise the Lord it is my commitment in ministry biologically and so on and so forth that anyone who is connected to this vision and this grace that by God's grace through our sacrifice that you will be able to climb on it that every time you you are purported to be connected to this grace it will open doors for you this is the prayer this is the desire but it will not happen by default and it's not always the issue of anointing virtue can you lay hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, change what needs to change in my life. Please pray. Change what needs to change in my life. I'm not ashamed, oh God, before you. Pray. I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Please make sure you are praying. Here I am in your presence. Do to me what you want. I'm open before you. To me, what you want, pray, Lord, make me exceptional. If you are a dear lady, pray, Lord, I'm tired of just having skills. Certificate should not be the only thing I'm bringing to my home. Grant me the grace to be exceptional, that my life will not close the door for my husband, that my life will not close the door for my wife. I obtain grace of God from heaven to be exceptional. Regardless my background, grant me grace. Someone is praying, grant me grace. I cry to you, O God of heaven. Grant me grace. Supernatural grace by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Listen, please sit down. Look at me. You must train yourself. Virtue. Make up your mind. When you dress, dress well. When you speak, speak well. Don't see people and look and say, ah, how far? And you are bending somebody. You are not virtuous. You may be human, but you are not virtuous. How many leaders do you want God to bring in your life with this kind of attitude? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Don't get up in the morning and pass people anyhow. Good morning. Ah, how are we? Fine. God bless you. How is today? Don't see people and pass and say, please, you greeted me. Whether I answer, no. There is no such thing as I am like that. Men can change. Are we together? There is no such thing as I'm angry. We are in our family, we are like that. Hey, whilst I am angry, even my parents give me chance. It's bad. Change it. That's what, the house of God is a place of transformation. Please take seriously what I'm saying. Listen, I continue to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to me the aspects of my life. I'm not ashamed of transition. I'm not ashamed of transformation. That what I am not today, I can be tomorrow. Lord, show me. Thank God for the ones I have, but which ones do I not have? 
some of you you need to work on respect some of you you need to work on honor you don't have honor for people at all some of us you need to work on your mouth your mouth is poisonous it's like a sword you can tear down people is something to work on there's nothing to be ashamed of some of you need to work on the fortitude for jealousy little things the moment you see a celebration somewhere and it's not you the senior brother of the prodigal son hallelujah some of you you give up very easily listen if you don't love yourself it's wickedness to want another person to love you why should someone love what you hate are we together now learn to draw your confidence from within first who you are in christ and then second on the strength of the dexterity of your virtue listen you can stamp your feet with all humility as a man and as a woman and say by the grace of god the god of heaven i know we are growing but i can stand to say i'm virtuous it's not pride i told myself and many of you who follow my teachings you've heard me say it my life's goal aside from being a man of God sincerely speaking my life's goal as a person is that God will grant me the grace that I will become a shoulder for many to lean on it is a goal and it is a worthy pursuit in my life I want to be that person who is the first to wrap my hands around people and say God bless you you can make it I want to be the one that when somebody dies I'm the first person to show up I hold you and say don't worry not to say where was your faith where did you keep no 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 make up your mind that in this life you will be virtuous don't just sit down and say why do men not like me why is this it's not just the issue of attack and it's not just the issue of miracle service could this be where the issue is make up your mind I've taught you you can measure your virtue by how much children love you. If children hate you, believe me, believe me, something is wrong. Do you know why? Let me tell you this. Because children will test your patience. Children will force you to stoop down. You see how this, my children, sometimes after service, while all of you are standing wanting to see the apostle they don't care they just come and sometimes they can say daddy bend your ear and i say look at this but it's training and i'm happy it's better to rehearse through them than to mess up in the future <laughs> are we together virtue character you see people you greet people you do something wrong you say i'm sorry not eh, what is what is it just in you love people your words are cultured you don't speak anyhow and talk anyhow and say i'm just like that no there is intelligence through wisdom the house is built by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled is god blessing us i will soon go to the last aspect but listen to this is a profitable way of celebrating valentine it is not saying, oh God, let somebody send me a gift. God is giving all of us a Valentine gift this night. And the Valentine gift is sit down. Sit down and walk on your spirit. Are we together? Yeah. It's better than a timeout. Because what you do will build you and make you exceptional nobody runs away from an individual with such an outspoken manifestation of the fruit of the spirit you become like i would say Bula and Hefzima. there are people who have no regard for elders no regard at all you secure the cause of every old person around you because you do not have that virtue of respect continue to strive as a person for grace from God I want to be as exceptional as I can be as far as I'm concerned compared to where I'm going I'm just starting I will find them out I will pray them I will study them until it becomes true in my life 
my only advantage should not be anointing my only advantage should not be revelation that you will eventually be the description of God's idea of a man can someone have that desire this night that you will be exceptional listen set a high standard for yourself don't just mark your script on an average and set a high standard when people are saying you are exceptional you are doing don't be carried away by those things lord still work on me in the area of respect i'm trying but i score myself with my reference i give myself 20 percent. i still need to read a book i need to go online i need to study something about character and you go online and download a message and look at it i need to learn on this and you are praying shaka okay let me study esther and let me study Ruth. what was exceptional about these women let me study david let me study solomon let me study isaac and you are building yourself lord make me an exceptional person forget about what is not yet there focus on what god is doing let me tell you it's only a matter of time the world will look at you and within a second was it not the preparation of esther that made her exceptional she passed ahasuerus once once there are times that your destiny will not allow you to pass twice. So you have to prepare as though that once is the only time. Please pray one minute again. Lord, I obtain grace to be an exceptional personality. In the name of Jesus, I conquer the limitation of my background. Some of us come from families where we have not seen the best model of family life. But in the name of Jesus, I make my family life my priority. I make it my priority. And in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I obtain grace from God. I obtain grace from heaven. I'd like you to pray that in Koinonia, we are building families that are exceptional. In the name of Jesus, no matter what your limitation is today, that your 10 years, your 5 years, your 20 years is full of glory, grace, honor, a message and a lesson for the world to see. Exceptional in every way. Someone is praying. Whether you are in a relationship or not, whether you are married or not, lift your voice and pray. Lord, make me. Don't say make my husband. Don't say make my wife. Don't say make my spouse. Pray for yourself. Work on me. Work on my character. Work on that jealousy. Work on that anger. Work on that impatience. Lord, I am not ashamed. This is a threshing floor. I am not ashamed to be worked upon. Man may laugh at you while God is working on you. But you just continue. It may not be my fault. It may be the background that I came from. It may be the experience I was exposed to. But in the name of Jesus, I kill every excuse. I must be exceptional. I make my family life a priority. Someone is praying. My children will be proud of me. They will call me the first representation of God that they can see. Build in me the fruit of the Spirit. Build in me virtue. Build in me patience. Take away anger. Take away folly from my life. Give me wisdom. Make me outstanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I found out if you focus on changing you, God will settle every other thing. Usually, the key is to want your spouse to change. The key is to want your whoever you are going out with to change. But the key really is you. The more you change, you begin to provoke changes around you. It's a principle. Stop sitting down and reporting your spouse to God and reporting your spouse to everybody and saying, this man, after I gave him five children, is not, yes, he may be wrong, but find a reason to change. There is a way you become so exceptional, it becomes unfair for life to give you certain things. Listen, ladies, let me tell you, there is a way you will work on yourself and build yourself. It becomes unfair in all honesty for certain kinds of people to come to you. 
don't sit down where you are and say I can't marry this kind of person me I'm this by what standard same thing with the men you can't sit down where you are and just say I, I believe that only a big no sir walk on yourself when it is respect you are there character you are there wisdom in communication you are there diplomacy you are there leadership you are there hard work and diligence you are there patience and temperance forbearance and forgiveness you are there you gather these virtues and they make you exceptional that is the inner beauty the bible talks about greater than outward beauty greater than outward six pack and being a macho man real virtue that lasts your face will wrinkle with time your hair will fall with time but your virtue remains seated You will thank me for what you are hearing it may not make sense now but be exceptional and see it's not only your husband that will celebrate you i promise you the whole world will stand before you whether you are a counselor or not whether you are a mentor or not they will come to you and say i want to be like you i have observed your life and have observed that you are an exceptional woman here is a thousand dollars here is five hundred dollars can you pray for me whatever made you exceptional sense I want the world to celebrate you no, sir. I do not want people to only come and celebrate the anointing and celebrate revelation there should be more and so I challenge you to join me in that strife of dissatisfaction do not clap too early go back home and write a list of the things you must work on don't be ashamed see let me tell you the moment you become ashamed of growth you will never rise to certain levels i do not want to meet the kings of my destiny and have a reason to be ashamed because i had anointing i had revelation but no virtue that the opening of of your mouth becomes a communication of wisdom some of you impatience has cheated you some of us anger has cheated us some of us foolishness lack of wisdom alone identify those things and pray them if you need to read books buy books jordan is here get books you can go on youtube that is the legitimate ground to load your phone and go on youtube and say for the next two weeks i'm going to study about exceptional women exceptional men in your heart and God looks at you it's not your fault you came from a background where your father was not the best model of a man your mother was not the best model of a woman maybe it was even a polygamous family maybe it was even a dysfunctional family somewhere you can't be crying forever because of yesterday you must summon the courage to say look what I did not eat may my children eat the joy they did not have If you succeed in ministry and fail in family, you failed. If you succeed in your office and fail in family, you failed. Are we together? The last, and we're done for tonight. I pray that what I'm sharing tonight will be worth your time here. The third most important priority in your life is your assignment just give me a few minutes and we'll pray we're done for tonight your assignment asks us a question why remember the first your relationship with God remember the second your family remember the third your assignment Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 
Then said I, Lo, I come. This is a prophecy about Jesus. In the volume of the book, look at me, Koinonia. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. I didn't come to roam around the earth escorting people in destiny for 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, and living sad to the grave. Dr. Miles Munro in his lifetime said the richest place is not the gold mine in South Africa, not the oil mines in the east, that the richest place, the wealthiest place is the cemetery where dreams that were never lived are there, where destiny's books that were never written, lives that would have been changed. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me. Write this down, please. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. I will take it again. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you have lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. Your greatest fulfillment will not come from cars. Truly I tell you, it will not come from houses. It will not come from your ascending the highest echelon of your profession. As good as that is. Your greatest fulfillment will come from knowing that you lived your life serving the purposes of God and blessing humanity. The morning I was in Delta State, I think, when Dr. Miles Munro went to be with the Lord. When the announcement of his death happened, he was headed for a conference somewhere in the region of Bahamas. And then they announced that he was dead, his wife was dead, his assistant dead, most of the people, about six of them dead. Do you know Dr. Burroughs, who now heads um, the Bahamas Faith Ministry International? He looked and he said, continue the conference. He said, if Miles Munro were alive, he would say, never cry for me. So let's do what you would have wanted. I said, my God men who cheated death they were so visionary when he died they checked his documents and they saw different books that were still in progress and some of those books have come out now abel though dead yet speaketh these are men who cheated death listen let me tell you you can immortalize your impact you can you can choose impact to popularity popularity is not the same as impact Popularity is many people knowing about you. Impact is men being changed because you are alive. Do not mistake in popularity for impact. Thank God for popularity, but I will give it up a thousand times for impact. Listen, many of us right now, God is speaking to you and saying, get back to where I started with you. I started with you. There are dreams that have died. Many of you, the way God started with you, the Spirit of God continues to cry. It is important to find your purpose before marriage. It is important to find your purpose before money. Because all these things, as powerful as they are, they can tilt you out of purpose. The first dealing of God in my life was purpose. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the kingdom. Then finances. Then it continued like that. I thank God for that sequence. Purpose. The first major book I can remember reading was Discovering Your Purpose. Miles Monroe. I read that book and I remember crying. I said, Lord, I will die empty. 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 Why should I live full? completely empty like a drink offering you poured your life sometimes when people see me and say apostle are you not tired i say at this age while i have the strength to move i will move while i have the strength to talk i will talk 
I will give my best because someday I will not have that strength. Someday it will be our children reading our legacy. When they look, they'll say, once upon a man, a time there was a man called Apostle Joshua Selman. We should be able to look from heaven and be proud of what we did. You are not called to do everything, but you are called to do something serious. And it is, listen, you have to make up your mind to wake up on this Valentine night and say, in the name of Jesus, I will have to wake up to my destiny. Every time I come for Koinonia, as soon as I come out of the car, I look at all the people and sometimes tears fill my eyes. When I travel to go for ministrations, and sometimes you cannot imagine how tired I am, I just stand and I pray. I say, Lord, I don't even have the time to pray. Just show me your mercy and show me your grace. Visit your people. Thank God the, 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 the message I've prepared. Sometimes I do not even have the time to revise it and all of that. I just say, Lord, I give you all the praise. And sometimes I'm so tired. And I'm tempted to say, what is all this about? Then I just remember, ah, spending your life, bringing glory to his majesty. This is what we do. You don't have to be in ministry to do it. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for money. It's a mindset that is bigger than looking for fame. Fame is important, but it's mundane when it stands side by side impact. If nobody knows you, listen. Matthew Seller lived about 767 or 69 years or so. 969. And nobody can remember anything about him. And Jesus lived for 33 and a half years. And the world cannot forget you. There was a woman called Anna the prophetess. The Bible does not tell us so much. Except that her assignment was to stay in the temple and pray Jesus from heaven to earth. And when she saw it, she said, now let my soul find rest. I have seen the consolation of Israel. Listen, you know your impact by the vacuum you create when you are not there. If nobody misses your absence, it means your presence is not a blessing. This is true. Purpose gives meaning and value to everything you do. Write it down, please. Purpose gives meaning and it gives value to everything you do. Marriage has a purpose. Money has a purpose. Children have a purpose. Prosperity has a purpose. Let me tell you, the real issue with this our generation is that most of our desires are not connected to purpose. We want to marry for marriage's sake. We want to make money for the sake of respect and pride. We want a name for ourselves. Most times people come, I want anointing. What is the purpose tied to it? Purpose is what gives your pursuit for money. It is purpose that makes your pursuit of money not materialism. Because now there is an object behind it. Every time you want to do anything in life, ask yourself why, to what end? Acts chapter 26. Let's look at Paul's manifesto of his purpose. We're going to read the first 18 verses. Be patient with me. We're rounding up. Then Agrippa, this was Paul before Agrippa. Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for yourself. And then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Read on. I think myself happy King Agrippa because I shall answer for myself this day before thee as touching all things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Uh -huh. Especially because I know you are an expert in this and that. Go to verse 7. Verse 7 please. It says, Unto which promise our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night, you know, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Right? read on it says why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that god should raise the dead i verily thought with myself that i ought to do many things contrary to the name of jesus now he's talking about his history now are we together which thing i also did in jerusalem and many of the saints did i shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priest and when they were put to death i gave my voice against them this is the past of a man. And I punish them often very in every synagogue and compel them to blaspheme. And being exceeding mad, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Uh-huh. 
whereupon as I went to Damascus everybody look at this with authority and commission from the chief priests at midday O king I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me uh-huh we're reading to 19 and when we were all fallen to the earth I had a voice speaking to me saying in the Hebrew tongue Saul Saul why persecutest thou me it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks and I said who art thou Lord and he said I am Jesus whom thou persecuted uh -huh. but rise and stand upon your feet for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose I have appeared unto thee for this purpose what is the purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto you delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I shall send thee to open their eyes is an assignment and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me where upon O King Agrippa that's my prayer for you I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision listen every time you do not live out your assignment you cost someone somebody's destiny will suffer when you do not rise to what God has ordained for you to do are we together what is your purpose and your assignment your contribution to kingdom advance the role you have been mandated to play in that thy kingdom come project that universal project of the spearheading of the influence and the power of God now please look up not everybody as far as purpose is concerned will have a pioneering grace not everybody will be a general overseer not everybody will be a man of God not everybody will be an apostle a prophet and all of that but your assignment is to find your role it doesn't necessarily mean you must have a platform to your name the most important thing is your role the role that you have to play let me tell you there are many purposeless people that continue to loiter around the face of the earth waiting for either a job or marriage or geographic relocation to give them a sense of meaning in their lives make up your mind Lord what did you bring me here to the earth for I cannot be escorting people all around for others, God can tell you like Moses, I've raised you to be a savior. For others, God can raise you like Aaron and say, hold the hands of Moses while he performs that function. For others, you will be the 70 elders that his spirit will come upon. For others, you will be the Joshua's. For others, you will be the Esther's who need to rise to the throne. Esther's assignment was first marriage. Her victory was dependent on marriage. Are you seeing that now? It, that is the reason why it is important to find out purpose before marriage because if you now find out that your purpose contradicts what you are now doing you are in trouble God will have to make do with what is there is God blessing someone here our society is full of idle people they wake up in the morning and they do not do anything and I say this respectfully especially for the gentlemen there is there is there is there is nothing that pinches my heart like seeing a young vibrant gentleman confused and wallowing in purposelessness strolling around in the morning not knowing where you are going there is nothing that is worth your waking up there is nothing that is worth your sitting down what are your plans for today nothing is there anything for me uh, okay let's go out and you you can't live your life like that you close your eyes you find out you are 40 years close your eyes again you are 50 years close the last one you are 60 years listen every time I celebrate my birthday it is this one vision I have my piles of books 
from the time God began to speak to me and I opened them lo I come in the volume of the book it is why when I sit down sometimes when I sleep I just get up and say Mr. Man you have messages to prepare there are lives that need to be changed stand up quickly there is work to, to be done oh there's some prayers to do because there is a meeting to attend and there are destinies depending on you Shabakatosia change them oh God Lay your hands and say, Lord, show me, show me, show me, reveal to me. What is my role in your program? I'm tired of escorting people up and down, left, right and center and not finding a basis for fulfillment. Someone is praying. What is my role in your program? Listen, look up. A few things and then we're going to pray. Please look up. Did you know that your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates? Do not forget this. Your assignment is divided into seasonal mandates. There are people who are workers in this ministry today. But the grace upon them, tomorrow they are going to have their churches. Tomorrow they are going to have their parishes. But in this season, their assignment is to be faithful as far as working and learning is, is concerned. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Nothing gladdens my heart when I have to talk with the workers and sometimes I see the leaders and I see them committed in doing something that is worth it. Listen, it's a cost to wake up in the morning and not have a justification for spending your day. You wake up in the morning, nothing to do. So what's my today about? I don't know. You watch movie, you go on internet, you come back and watch movie, you go on internet, you read a book, gossip here and there, sit down, eat food, go out, come back in the evening, yawn yourself to sleep. It's a useless life. You must make up your mind. Visionary people have to beg sleep to wait. sleep wait give me two more hours because what is burning in my spirit do you know sincerely let me tell you there are times i wake up in the morning and the last thing i can remember is okay i woke up maybe i went to bed by five i wake up around nine and i'm busy I, and the next thing i'm checking and it's nine in the evening and i'm like my god what in the world is this what in the world is this i have so much to do before you finish learning and writing and praying and doing all of that you want to pray you close your eyes time is gone but for many of you because of lack of vision you pray for five minutes there is no burden on you are we together nothing that compels your prayer lord i thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah you are the rose of sharon thank you for my life thank you for my parents thank you for my loved ones i give you all the praise in jesus name of course that's all if you if you are not a visionary person but there are times that praying for koinonia alone can take you a whole day. You take the departments one by one. Lord, worship team. Give them songs from heaven. Give them visions from heaven. Take another department. Before you do three, the whole day has gone. That food is kept in front of you and you cannot even remember that there's food in front of you. If there is nothing that has that grip and that obsession on you, it's a sign you are not living a visionary life. Believe me when I tell you, after service now, I'm seeing people here, when I go back home, it's not sleep. Oh. Sleep? I receive an average of 500 to 600 text messages every day aside from calls and some of them are you and you are angry that I don't respond to it right now my phone my phone is never off never never except maybe they are removing the the, 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 the battery or something maybe changing sim or something it is never off because of the noise of the pressure and the burden of ministry the last time i had music from my phone like ringtone was 2012. i put my phone on silent permanently till tomorrow what do you think ministry is 
what do you think leadership is? Ah, God is just lifting them. Please receive grace to be serious in the name of Jesus Christ. 11 o'clock, you are already sleeping. The last thing God told you to do two years ago is still there. You've not developed it. You are not reading any book. I hope you are not angry. No book on your table. Nothing on your laptop. I check your phone and all I see is just browsing and gisting. You mean you don't do any other thing? Please, receive grace to settle down. There are some of you what you need to do now the five thousand god blessed you with use two thousand and one buy cds and settle down make up your mind i will not sleep i will not wake up later than eight o'clock for no reason again buy an alarm clock in the market are we together that's right myself you must be disciplined for the sake of your destiny myself you must be disciplined this unnecessary hunger that distracts tell yourself in the name of jesus i'm not fasting but i will buy a drink food be disciplined the sabbath was created for man and you study okay today i'm studying on faith and you don't let any devil distract you you are reading on faith you listen to three do you know there are people who are not even workers here they listen to an average of three to five koinonia messages i listen to an average of three koinonia messages every day without fail i'm the one that preached it all and i listen to it again with my heart open there are things if i do not do in a day my eyes will not see sleep please listen i'm opening up my heart so that we'll be serious this thing is not luck you don't get the anointing just by wish no you don't grow into dimensions by saying a season just came do you know the amount of prayer investment it takes to really carry power spiritual power that works there are weeks that i have an average it happens most time in january there was a time i had 18 sermons in one week and you must prepare them my brothers and my sisters i destroy the spirit of laziness from your life this night and i pray for you that one of the things you will learn in this valentine some of you god is calling you into the area of business but you will not sit down sit down sit down buy books read I gave us three books to read. Some of you don't even, you've not even seen how the cover looks like. It's carelessness. When I'm traveling, whether it's to Abuja or anywhere, or almost all through the journey, it is worship and a sermon and something. I don't have that time to waste. I may be as sleepy as whatever, but I'm listening. I can't waste three hours, four hours, five hours. I'm either charging my spirit in worship or I'm listening to something. Listen, life is time tagged. You will not always have the energy and the time. And there is a time when you should have prepared and built certain capacities. Whether you are ready or not, life will open the, the stage. So build capacity now. Don't you know that when you get married, you may not have that time to pray the way you want again because you are now under your own authority. No matter how prayerful you are. So now that you have the luxury to roll on the ground, thank God, don't just keep saying, Lord, when will my husband come? Let me build capacity. I don't know what it means to pray when you are pregnant. I don't know what it means to pray when you pray now. Eat for the journey is far. There are men, you don't know what it means to serve God with pressure of school fees. So now that you are alone, you are not paying anybody's school fees. You will write sermons today that you will use for the next 10 years. There are messages I still go back and make reference to them. I wrote some of those messages sometimes 2004, 2005, 2006. I just developed them and build on them. Something must consume your heart. Something must burn within your spirit. Whether you are a man of God or not, Apostle, this is the goal I've set this year. What are you doing? I want to become a sound expert. Tell me what you are doing now for it. Nothing. One day, I'm sure that Koinonia will organize training of sound people. 
that is the language of carelessness and laziness I want to become an exceptional mother I believe it is a call show me what book you are reading show me the exceptional people I want to have a great foundation today that will raise great women and great show me what model you are studying now I should come and meet you walking when you are visionary it's easy to say no to many things ah apostle can I come and visit you I'm sorry I'm busy but you cannot you can't sit down people come and say borrow me your television and you're busy let me play a movie because you are free completely free I have taught you receive grace to master the night this night time is a good time to sleep but it's also a good time to make spiritual investments I can tell you this for some reason the spirit of revelation is heavy upon men in the night when people slumber around and you are just walking around and just saying Lord thank you thank you for the next level this year now that there's a lot of expansion and a lot going on in ministry you cannot tell I travel I return I'm tired there are things I'm praying Lord let's make sure that we're walking with your way there's a department to meet there are people to meet there's a this and that and that no laziness you can't be eating 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 and you sit down you sleep you get up when you are truly idle you become the devil's workshop I hope you know purpose is not looking for money except if looking for money leads to purpose purpose is finding that which can bring impact to the lives of men that's purpose looking for food to eat is not purpose except if my purpose of eating it is to find the energy to fulfill God's assignment please everybody write Lord reveal to me my assignment in this season go and pray it as a prayer point reveal to me oh God my assignment imagine if Bishop Oyeriko did not find his place in destiny imagine if Papa Ia Deboe did not find his place in destiny imagine if fathers like WF Kumuyi did not find their place in destiny. Imagine if there were no Benny Hins. Imagine if there were no TL Osborns. Imagine the world without this man. Imagine the world without men like Nelson Mandela. I made up my mind that I would give my best for God and for this generation. Let it be that I did my best. My best, Lord, is everything I have. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. My best, Lord, is all I have to give. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. I wrote this song many years ago as a commitment. It was a vow and a covenant. Lord, if I die doing what I'm doing, let it is with honor that I died for you. For me now to live is Christ and to die is gain. It's not a confession. It's true. That's why I was hey! I don't panic I'm already dead dead people don't die twice it is appointed unto men to die once I will spend this life God has given me serving you do not know the honor that I have serving this generation and serving the purposes of God the greatest thank you is not an alert the greatest thank you is not fame it's not a name the greatest thank you is apostle thank God you were born that because of you my life is changed because of you my father is saved because of you I found direction sometimes I hold those things I'm not a very emotional person but tears just come down my eyes and I say Lord thank you thank you for making me a gift to this generation you can be Barabbas you can be Jesus the choice is yours 
You can be the two thieves standing, hanging on the cross, or you can be Jesus. I made up my mind that I will give God and this generation my best. He gave his best for me. I will give my best for him. So when you see me travel and you see me do the things that I do, oh dear generation, hear me. It is not because we are necessarily exceptional. There is a fire that burns from within us. It is the fire to see the globe set ablaze. We will set this generation on fire in a way that has not been seen. We will contribute our quota to kingdom come. And when all is said and done, we will stand like the fathers who have gone ahead of us and salute the earth and make sure that we leave a legacy that outlives us. And then we will wave the earth goodbye with honor. Be wise in your living. Don't live like a fool. Live as though time is passing. You've celebrated five birthdays in purposelessness. From the time God started nudging you, wake up. Wake up. Arise, thou that sleepest. It is time to wake up. God is calling you to be a kingdom financier. You don't become a kingdom financier at 70. It's not a blessing. So go and buy all the books on finances. Not for the purpose of having money. For the purpose of having the tools that it will take to minister. Oh, apostle, God is calling me to be a man of God. That's not the time to loiter around looking for invitations. That's the time to fast when others are not fasting. That's the time to pray when people are sleeping. Not apostle, they should give me Bible study in one church. Pray that my pastor will see me. No, that's the time to settle down. Premature manifestation will kill you. God tells you your assignment is to be a man of God's wife. That's not the time to say, where is he? What is your business? You stay and build yourself. Lord, I will need patience. I obtain grace. God tells you you are going to be an evangelist traveling around the world. You should be casting the demons that cause plane crash. You should be praying. What do, what do you mean by there's nothing to do? You settle down and pray. Lord, in advance, I prophesy to the partners that will have to stand by me. May I not be stranded because of finances. Let it not be that while I'm preaching the gospel, my children don't have their school fees paid. I receive the spirit of revelation. I need to preach two or three messages per day. I obtain grace from God. I will be persecuted in ministry. I will be misunderstood in ministry. Lord, build my capacity now so that when those times come, I will not be distracted. My best, Lord, is everything I am. My best, Lord, I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. You made me great. You made me special. You made me great. I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all. Valentine give to you embrace God embrace family embrace destiny and I show you a winner many things will come to clamor for your attention but I show you the things that really matter when all is said and done it is God family destiny not crowd they will come and go they will say give us bread today king of the Jews and they will say crucify you tomorrow I show you what is necessary and unnecessary Valentine is only useful when wisdom is added to you if all you do is to eat and receive presents as good as it is and you do not have an opportunity to grow destiny wise you are not making progress I prayed over this and I asked the Lord that when I teach it it will mean something to someone that you can make up your mind. Some of you will need to go home this night and just sit down outside with a notebook and 
and start writing things lord why am i here show me the scripture that represents the anthem of my life i cannot wait for marriage to define my relevance i can't sit down waiting for a man to appear in my life so that i will find what i'm here for lord why was i born and you pray from the depth of your heart lord you have called me to be a man of god what do i need to learn what dimension of ministry are you giving me and god says i've called you to be a prophet i've called you to be an evangelist and you get books about the prophetic ministry and you are praying i've called you to the ministry of help and you begin to study lord give me patience give me forbearance give me the grace to love people Oh, I'm calling you to be a great pastor. Lord, give me the heart of a shepherd. The grace to love people, whether they love me back or not. You are preparing for destiny. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hold the hands of someone who are going to pray. My best Lord everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you my best Lord is everything I have my best Lord I give all I have to you you made me great you made me great you make me special you make me special you made me great I give all I have to you You made me great You made me special You made me great I give all I have to you Prayer point number one Lord, anything that will steal your place in my life Cut it out of my life now Please lift your voice and pray Whatever will take your place in my life. What shall separate us from the love of God? Strengthen my spiritual connection. Oh God of heaven. Strengthen my spiritual connection. That in life and death. I will serve you all my life. Nothing will take me from you. Let nothing take the hunger, O oh God. Let nothing steal the passion, O oh God. Is someone praying? Ara sala shalanda sala katosia. Prayer point number two. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Now listen. Whether you are married or not, our time is gone. But for the sake of God and for the sake of your family, whether here or not, I want you in the next two minutes to cry. Married or not, Lord, I pray for my wife. I pray for my husband. I pray for my children. Prophesy and declare. I decree and declare that my family life will work. Someone is prophesying. model families in the name of Jesus exceptional homes by the spirit of the living God homes that are a replica of heaven all wise please pray pray for your children born and unborn I prophesy ahead over them champions warriors men of fire women of grace I separate them from the weaknesses of territory from the weaknesses of background from the limitations of ancestry I cut them away from the limitations of tribe and geographic territory
victory i craft them into a new order a new spirit a new tribe someone is praying pray over your children they are taught of the lord great is their peace pray for your home blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house his righteousness endures forever pray pray for yourself lord make me a man of character make me a woman of character exceptional exceptional a dispensing of the virtue of heaven regardless my background regardless my past regardless my limitations is someone praying i obtain grace exceptional grace exceptional an exceptional man an exceptional woman skilled and virtuous valuable a contributor to the growth of my home hallelujah now listen please we are still praying for family i'd like you to pray lord my children must be better than me they must be greater than me my children will never be the worst fashion of me where i failed may they not fail where i could not cross may they cross someone is praying be selfless enough to pray may my children become extensions of my legacy please prophesy hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord now we're going to pray listen there are many of us you cannot move forward even with regards to family life because when you look at your background dysfunctional family you look at your past it's not a testimony that you desire you look at the future it looks bleak and you allow the devil fool you into thinking you will become just like your parents you are going to cancel it there is a new grace a new wine a new covenant i love my parents i honor them but where they failed lord i obtained the grace of an eagle to rise and move past it lift your voice and pray pray growing up i saw poverty lord may i be the one to change it growing up i saw limitations i obtained grace to change it by the spirit i'm a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder please i'd like you to pray that in the name of jesus your home will stand in the name of jesus your home will stand no divorce no separation in the name of jesus you are standing as a model by the spirit of the living god hallelujah now the last prayer point there's one minute now you're going to pray if you're married you're still going to pray for your wife and your husband you're not married you're going to pray lord please bring a man or a woman in my life that fears you let it not be that is marriage that took me down please pray it all and pray it seriously lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus pray pray call for a husband that loves god that will serve god with all his life a responsible man who fears god call for a woman of virtue a mother in israel Is somebody pray cry unto God the giver of all good things hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. Listen. You are going to pray for purpose. Some of you, from this prayer, God will show you dreams. Some of you, God will make references to books that you have that are locked up in your house. And say, go back and carry that book of 2001. That book of 2005. Open it. There is something I told you to write there that you need to revisit. You are going to pray. Lord, like fire from heaven, the blueprint of my destiny, let it rest on me in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cry to the Lord. Lord, let me not escort others in destiny and live a visionless and a purposeless life. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me, as it is written of me, as it is written of me. The purpose for my existence, the reason for the gift of life, the reason for the gift of health, the reason for access to wealth. Open it unto me, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me give us one more prayer, one minute. And with that prayer, I'll make an altar call. We're going to all pray and then we'll make altar call. Listen, I told you that the highest measure of wealth and fulfillment is peace. Look up. We live in a very troubled world. On one side, there's terrorism. Another side, there's plague of diverse kinds of infirmities. On one side, there's all kinds of family crisis. You are going to cry, Prince of Peace. You said you will give me your peace. I need peace in my life. Listen, all this, all this trouble, some of us have become lean because of trouble, not lack of food. Some of us have had high blood pressure at a young age because you are thinking about too many things. Listen, you are going to pray for the peace that gives you rest. Where will money come from? Where will this come from? When will I marry? When will I have a child? When will I have all? Be careful. Those things can eat up your joy and your peace. The last prayer point. Lord, for me and my loved ones, give me peace. You are the prince of peace. Lift your voice. Every fear, every disturbance in my heart that continues to perturb my peace, I obtain peace from you. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Is someone praying? Peace. In the name of Jesus, I receive peace. Peace over finances. Peace over marriage. Peace over my home. Some of you may need to prophesy to your homes. Peace be still. Every turbulence. Peace be still. Every attack. Peace be still, every wind, peace be still, every financial turbulence, peace be still, every confusion in your mind, peace be still, every noise from society, peace be still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we have decided as a people to celebrate this moment and this season with wisdom. You have taught us the value of connection with you, our maker and our king. You have taught us the value of family. Lord, for those of us who have not paid attention to family, by this teaching, oh God, would you cultivate a sincere desire? to birth families that work in the name of Jesus we thank you because the marriages in this ministry will work exceptional homes homes that reflect the power the grace and the possibilities of God and I pray for every home with any kind of turbulence peace be still in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and I pray oh God of heaven 
concerning our destinies everything that stands today as a hindrance let it give way in Jesus name Amen. let this message oh God be etched in our hearts that even whilst we sleep it will replay again in the name of Jesus we choose the things that matter in this life we choose to invest our days with wisdom we choose to leave legacies that outlive us father we thank you we thank you for giving us the honor to hear your truth in the name of Jesus now keep standing I want to make an altar call please listen to me most times when we say altar call most people just shut down but tonight the greatest love the greatest expression of love was demonstrated through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus you are here on this night inside in the overflows and you are yet to make that commitment for Jesus you are saying apostle I want this day to never be forgotten in my life that on Valentine's Day while other years have not been that way I want this year to be different whether you are in overflow one two three please stand my dear brother overflow one two three uh, well overflow three you can just move to the front of your projector stand but as many who are inside I want you to literally run and come and stand here it's my honor to lead you on this day would you dance with me Song of song. Keep coming. Would you dance with me, oh lover of my soul? To the song of song. One more time. You're still coming. Join them. Please join them quickly. Would you dance with me? says greater love had no man than this that a man give his life for his brethren there are very few people who will be able to give their lives for you but there is one who gave his life for you you make this valentine a very meaningful one when you hand over your all to him he is a true lover that does not fail many may love circumstantially many may love you depending on what you become or not become but there is one who truly loves you. Behold what manner, the Bible says, of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. I salute you for making this decision. Whoever will come to him, the Bible declares that he will in no wise cast away. Please lift your right hand truly and say after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I come before you just as I am. I declare that Jesus from today and forever is my savior my lord and my king i receive the remission of sin i receive the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and the life of god from today i am a child of god connected to god forever I declare that I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Thank you, Father, for bringing these ones. We bless you. It's an honor to be able to present these as trophies to you even on this special day. We pray that the grace that keeps, the grace that builds, the grace that empowers, may these graces work in their lives. We introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will know him and he will make your life a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, please, I want you to follow. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.